Well, uh, I, I, I wrote the book because I was living in Rome and uh, I, I very soon realized the gap that there was between the, uh, the, the media image of Pope Francis and the reality as it was known to people I I in the Vatican. And uh, um, obviously I, I, I thought that it was necessary to, to, to make this public. What do I hope to achieve? Well, um, I, ideally um, people would, um, would, would say to Pope Francis, um, this is not what we expect. Uh, I don't uh, think that's very likely, but uh, at least I, I wanted to um, provide a warning to the future conclave not to make the same mistake uh, the next time and uh, elect a completely um, unknown cardinal who turns out to be um, quite different from what he was, he was expected to be. Well, my object was to show that he is acting like a dictator and also to point out by studying his career in, uh, in Argentina that he is in fact a, a Peronist by, uh, uh, by upbringing. Uh, he was brought up in the, t in the time of uh, Peron and he is very much in the Argentinian uh, Peronist uh, tradition. Uh, Juan Peron was a, was a complete opportunist. He, um, he came to power um, essentially as a, as a right-wing uh, ruler and um, when, he, when, it, when it suited him he, he changed to uh, extremely left-wing and anti-clerical uh, policies and this, this is the Peronist tradition. Uh, um, Peronism is not either right-wing or, or, or left-wing uh, in Argentina. It, it embraces both. They're, they're complete um, opportunists. And this sums up uh, Pope Francis exactly. Well, uh, we, we know that Pope Francis's re regime has, has shown retaliation against anybody who, uh, uh, who criticizes him. And I wanted to protect myself from that, and more particularly, protect the people who um, whom the, uh, whom the Vatican might think associated with me. Now, I never thought that this could be permanent. I thought that the Vatican would discover who I was um, uh, very soon. But in any case, uh, for, from the point of view of uh, uh, publishing the print edition of the book, it was necessary to reveal my name. Well, the, 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 the thing that I most like is the fact that I know the book has been read by a, a lot of people in high positions in the church, cardinals and others. Uh, they've shown great interest uh, in it, and, and those who are in the know uh, um, are aware that um, it, um, it reveals the, the truth of the Vatican as it is. The, uh, w w one of the uh, w one of the uh, important stories that have come out recently is the situation in the diocese of Cardinal Rodriguez Maradiaga, uh, who is the uh, the right hand man of the Pope, and it's now becoming uh, increasingly known that his diocese is one of the most corrupt in the entire church, both uh, financial corruption and moral corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a story that uh, that is coming out and. Uh, and uh, I, I expect it to be better known in future months. Well, it, it wasn't intended to be a, 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 a balanced picture of Pope Francis. It was intended to be an alarm call. Um, you, you know, when you're, when you're shouting fire when a house is on fire, you don't, um, you don't say, uh, but actually the fire is doing quite good work um, cooking the, kitchen, the, the, the chicken in the kitchen. Um, I, I, I never intended to write a, a balanced picture of, uh, uh, of um, uh, Francis's papacy. I, I did intend to provide the background of, uh, of uh, Francis in Argentina uh, and, and show um, uh, something of his psychology. Uh, and I don't think that I have been unfair there. I mean, for example, I, I've revealed the Kolvenbach report uh, uh, written by Father Kolvenbach when it, it was proposed to make um, Bergoglio a bishop, uh, in which he said that uh, for various character defects, he, um, he, he was quite unsuitable for it. Now, you know, some people have reacted to this as, a, as if it were um, a character assassination, but it's, it's actually 
um, uh, quite a good character study. The, the, the Jesuits are, uh, are pretty accurate psychologists. And if you look at what, at what Father Kolvenbach wrote, uh, this gives an insight into what, what sort of man Bergoglio actually is. Basically the fact that he's a politician uh, and he relies on public relations and, and he's relied very effectively uh, on them uh, for that. And uh, basically it, it's, it's telling people that they, they need to look behind this um, facade and, and see what um, uh, Pope Francis really is uh, and, and what he has done. Because if you look at his um, record on reform, he has not proved himself a reformer at all. Uh, Pope Francis, uh, when he came to the uh, came to the papacy, um, ha had no reason to oppose financial reform. He 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 wasn't involved in the Vatican machine before his election, and of course uh, he agreed to the to the reforms that that, that were recommended. Uh, but um, for him, um, power politics are more important than than reform. And um, he found that he'd put in position uh, Cardinal Pell, um, who is uh, not, not the sort of um, submissive type that uh, uh, Pope Francis likes to have around him. Uh, he, he eventually found that it was actually more convenient not to have um, Cardinal Pell looking into things and, uh, and um, uh, revealing uh, inconvenient uh, secrets. And he's, uh, he's allowed himself with the old guard in the, in the Vatican to put things back the way they were before his election. Well, that, 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 is, uh, that is, of course, a, a very crucial aspect. Uh, um, Pope Francis was the, uh, was the candidate of the St. Gallen lobby, whose object is... Uh, uh, um, a change in church teaching, uh, a, a relaxation of discipline on uh, sexual morality, and uh, this is what um, uh, what Pope Francis is, is implementing. Now, uh, clearly, Catholics who uh, believe that um, Catholic doctrine is is unchanging are very concerned at this. This is on the basis of, of the book that I wrote, uh, published in uh, 2015, Phoenix from the Ashes. My uh, intention in that book was to present uh, what was the, um, the mainstream view of, um, uh, of Catholicism up to the early 1960s. Um, now, if, if, if you think this is an extreme position, well, everybody all Catholics until the early 1960s uh, were, were, were extremists. But uh, I, I think the modern situation um, ought to be judged in the light of, of uh, perennial Catholic philosophy rather than the other way around. Uh, absolutely, we, we've seen this just uh, last week with the, uh, the letter of uh, Pope Benedict where, where he was in, in fact expressing a, a, a serious criticism of the uh, of the books he was uh, asked to comment uh, on, and, and um, Monsignor Viganò presented it as a as an endorsement of Pope Francis. Th this is the way uh, the media have been manipulated by uh, by the Vatican under Pope Francis. Well, I don't see that this that, that, that this kind of manipulation as the way to make the church more open. Uh, if you want the church to be more open, uh, th then you you uh, strike a balance between all parties. That's certainly not what, uh, what uh, Pope Francis has been doing. And, and in fact, uh, uh, if you speak to, to, to bishops uh, or cardinals in Rome, they will tell you that uh, um, Pope Francis doesn't deal with them in a collegial spirit at all. Uh, they, they, uh, they were treated much more collegially by, by Benedict XVI. No, as I say, Pope Francis is, is a dictator. Well, Be Benedict was being polite, uh, clearly. Uh, I, I, ha I haven't studied um, 
Bergoglio's uh, formation in great detail. I would say it was simply the um, standard formation of uh, Jesuits in Argentina uh, at that time. He's, he, he's never distinguished himself as a theologian. Uh, very, very few people c could argue that. So uh, uh, Benedict was being polite. Well, I, I, I think um, I, I think there are there are, there are Catholics who who believe that uh, Pope Francis is totally ignorant. Uh, I, I don't share that view. Um, um, I don't think he's a fool by by any means. He, he he's always shown himself a, a very clever man, and and I'm sure he um, uh, mastered um, the, the the ordinary Jesuit formation of his time um, in in an a adequate way. Um, uh, against that, one has to say that he has shown extraordinary ignorance on some points of uh, of Catholic doctrine and, and said some things which are uh, completely out of line. Well, there, there are two aspects of that. Uh, there, there, there's the doctrinal one. And um, yes, um, um, the, the, the only parallel in that respect is, is um, the pontificate of Paul VI. Um, fr from the personal point of view, um, Francis is an example of uh, very few maverick popes that there have been uh, in history uh, who've been chosen uh, without proper thought uh, and who've gone completely off the rails. Uh, and um, they, they were, they, they were criticised in their time. And uh, I think that um, the same thing hap uh, needs to happen to uh, Pope Francis. Helping him, well, I, I, it would only help him if, if he read it. I, I, I don't know that I, I can aspire to that. Um, uh, no, I mean, what I'm concerned uh, about is, is the church. Uh, I, I'm not concerned to help uh, Pope Francis uh, in, individually. Um, and and, and whether, whether the book can provide a remedy, I don't know. As I say, what I hope it will do is... is um, uh, help the cardinals at the next conclave to avoid making the, the same mistake. Well, the, I, I expected this. Uh, the, the, there is a, a point of detail to be made that if the, um, if the Order of Malta wants to suspend me, it needs to do so legally. Uh, the documents that I've received about my suspension show that it has been done in, a, in an irregular fashion by the Grand Chancellor, Baron Berslager, who is now in exclusive control of the order. And this needs to be challenged. Uh, if, if, the, if, the, if the process is done legally, then uh, the order is entitled to, to suspend me legally. Well, I, I was educated for 10 years at a, at a Jesuit school. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, know, I know the Jesuit tradition. Uh, I know the Jesuit uh, tradition as it was um, uh, before it was corrupted in the 1960s. Uh, I've written uh, the biography of a famous English Jesuit, Father Martin, uh, Father Martin Darcy, uh, who, uh, one of his least claims to fame, he was uh, provincial of the English Jesuits for five years. Uh, I had an uncle who was a Jesuit priest and was in fact the socius or secretary to Father Darcy during those years. So I, I, I'm quite close to the, um, to, 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 the, to the good Jesuit tradition as it used to be. Uh, one of the great tragedies to me is the way that uh, tradition has been corrupted. And the fact is, that one of the points to be made about Pope Francis is that he's the product of a thoroughly corrupted the Society of Jesus, and he's by no means the worst example of them. But he, he's the product of, of, of a very bad period in the Society of Jesus, and a very bad political tradition in Argentina. And this helps to explain why he should um, be, be so outside the, uh, the, the tradition of popes as we've come to expect them. Pope Francis is not a popular man in Argentina. Uh, they know what he was like as, uh, as Archbishop of Buenos Aires. Um, 
uh, if standards are so low in in um, uh, in Latin America that uh, Pope Francis is uh, all right for them, um, I, I I hope that is not so. But um, it's not certainly not good news for the rest of the world. Well, uh, as 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 one of the as one of the more disastrous. Uh, Pontificates in history, um, you, you know, there, there, there have, um, there have been popes who've been complete mistakes. Uh, what uh, distinguishes Pope Francis is, is that he's not just personally a mistake, but that he is uh, trying to um, uh, lead the church in a direction which rejects tradition. None of the uh, none of the the bad popes that I was alluding to in the past tried to do that. So you, you have these, the, these, these two elements of danger from Pope Francis.